Hey everyone, it's good to see you all today. Hope you're having a good week. Uh, if you have your Bibles, we'll be in 1 Samuel chapter 3 today. 1 Samuel chapter number 3. I want to talk to you a little bit about a kind of a tragic story really today. Uh, I want to tell you about Eli and his sons and uh, kind of the introduction to one of the more famous judges, Samuel. And uh, I have right here, I don't know if you can see it, hopefully you can, this is a vine. You all are familiar with vines, you've seen them before, you know what they can do. And uh, I have a, a pretty nasty vine right here that I kind of want to use as an example to kind of help us illustrate, I think, a little bit of Eli's life here. Um, you, know, you know a lot about vines, you know that they're pretty destructive. Um, as you can see here, what this one's done is it started down here in the ground and it's grown up into the tree. I mean, look at the size of this thing. It looks like almost like a tree itself. You can see where I, I cut it to kill it. Um, and it's, I mean, I've got more even coming up through here and growing and it's going all the way up into the tree. I mean, here's some vine here. Uh, it's all twisted around here. The problem with vines is once they take root and once they grow, they, they kill the host. They basically strangle the tree that they wrap themselves around. And I'll kind of show you an example of what this particular vine has done uh, to this tree. It's kind of a sad thing. Um, the problem with, with vines is if you neglect them, if you don't deal with them immediately, um, they can grow out of control just like this one has and do a lot of damage. They can destroy a lot, especially when they reproduce and they kind of get through the whole entire forest or the tree line that you might have in your home. Eli, um, if anything, he was a tragic story uh, about neglect. So last year, Amy and I were sitting out and we heard this crashing, cracking, wood-breaking sound. We didn't know what it was. Uh, and we looked out from our back porch and you could see, it's kind of hard to see behind me, but there was a branch here that had just started to slowly fall towards the ground. I guess some strong wind had come along, made it weaker, and it just snapped in half. And if you can kind of still see a little bit, the vine has completely consumed the, the branch and it is literally being held up there by the vines themselves. So that's the trouble with vines. If you leave them unattended, if you just neglect to take care of them, if you don't resolve the issue, they can create a lot of damage and they can take a beautiful forest like this and absolutely just destroy it and destroy the beautiful trees. So Eli, in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter number three, you know, he was a father who unfortunately he failed to lead at home and he also failed to lead in his ministry. He didn't do what God had asked him to do and didn't really discipline his children the way he was supposed to. Look with me at 1 Samuel chapter 3. Look at verse number 12 here today. Verse 12 says, In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. Um, this is kind of a scary warning from God. He says, listen, you know, when I start something, I'm going to finish it. And he's talking about the judgment that he's about to impose on Eli. And the punishment, he, he really gives three main things. There's, a, there's I think there's a fourth in here as well, but it's not as important as these first three that I'm going to give you here. But the first one was this. His, 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 unfortunately, both of his boys would both die on the same exact day. Verse 34 says, And this shall be a sign unto thee that shall come upon thy two sons on Hophni and Phinehas, and one day they shall die, both of them. Uh, Eli, number two, Eli was to be replaced. He was going to get taken out of his ministry, and God was going to replace him with Samuel. Verse 35 says, And I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in mine heart and in my mind, and I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before mine anointed forever. The third thing, the third punishment that God gives here is your family will become poor and have to beg at the temple uh, which you forsook for food. Verse 36 says, And it shall come to pass that every one that is left in thine house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread, and shall say, Put me, I pray thee, into one of thy priest's offices that I may eat a piece of bread. So why, why all this punishment from God? I mean, this is a pretty stern harsh, harsh punishment. Uh, no one would want this to happen to us. So why is this happening? Two things, okay? And I'm sorry this isn't really an uplifting message. There's, there's, This is just, it's one of those things that sometimes we need to look at the bad as well as the good. We need to be well-rounded. Um, and here are the two things that we really can learn from Eli's life. Number one, 
is he failed. He failed as a dad. Um, and what I mean by that is he neglected his boys. Um, yes, he was there. Yes, he provided a job for them. Yes, he cared for them, met their physical needs, but he failed to meet their spiritual needs. He chose not to train them in the ways of the Lord. He didn't train up his child the way he should. The Bible actually describes them as being children of Baal. They were Baal worshipers. They were sons of Belial, as he says. Um, they chose to worship false gods. They didn't have a relationship with God. They weren't interested in the things of God. Yes, they were working in the ministry. Yes, they were doing the job that, that Eli had given them to do, but their heart wasn't in it. Their heart was far from God. The second thing is he failed not only as a father, but he failed as a priest. He did not do the ministry that he was called to do. It was Eli's responsibility to resent, represent God to the people, and he didn't do that. Uh, instead of doing what he chose, he, he instead let himself become a passive leader. He just kind of let the ship sail in whatever direction it may go. And because of that, his sons made a complete mockery of, of God's system. I mean, his sacrificial system. And it was a shame. Um, the Bible tells us that, unfortunately, uh, the two boys, what they did is, and this is awful, but... Uh, they apparently made the whole system of sacrifices so grievous that people didn't even want to come to the temple. If you look in chapter 2, you'll see that explained. You'll also see where the Bible says that unfortunately these two boys were having intimate relations with the ladies that were coming to the temple as well. This is obviously wrong. This is defilement. This is sin, and it's a shame. And unfortunately, the Bible tells us that Eli, instead of removing them from this position, instead of punishing them and saying, listen, you guys are fired. You can't do this anymore. He allowed this to continue. He went up to them and said, hey, you guys, you shouldn't be doing this. Um, but he didn't actually remove them from the position. And of course, they didn't change. There were no consequences for their behavior. And so, unfortunately, we see God having to step in and deal with this. God takes his ministry very, very seriously, and he takes parenting very, very seriously. So I will say this, like a vine, if we're not careful, if we allow sin to creep up into our hearts, into our homes, into the hearts of our children, in the hearts of our ministry, and those working in our ministry, we're going to see disastrous effects, just like this vine having a disastrous effect on a tree and on the entire woods. We have to be careful not to be lazy, not to be complacent, not to be um, just, hey, let's do whatever as you know we see fit. We've got to do it the way God wants us to do and be diligent about what God has given us to do and work our hardest and do our best every single day.